Tom here from Lauren Systems. We're going to talk about Unify and comparing a few different access points and, you know, some thoughts that should go into which one you should buy. If you want to learn more about me or my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you'd like to hire a short project, there's a hire us button up at the top. If you want to support this channel other ways, there's some affiliate links down below to get you deals and discounts on products and services we talk about on this channel. And I put this together, which is copy pasted somewhat from the Unify comparison chart. And they have a pretty nice list they made with all the comparison between all the different models, maximum potential speed of the five gigahertz, the 2.4 gigahertz radio, what power supplies they use, how many client associations they can support. And you know, these are all design considerations we're putting this in. Also, some of these have uh, outdoor indoor ratings. And we have down here towards the bottom, some of their specialty devices like the in-wall, which I do have in here as well. But they also have these ones that are like made to be exposed more directly to the weather. So big variety of options that Unify has. I have a few of these in stock and I wanted to show the comparison charts between them. Now, this, this comparison, some of the top information is all just pulled from Unify, so nothing special there. I left the radio at default in the radio settings for these. I bring this up because I wanted to compare all these the same way with the same channel width. I know you can go faster by setting up wider, wider channel widths on there, um, but that's not what we did for this test. We just wanted to do the comparison of all these and see if there was a significant difference between this variety of models. Also, MIMO chains, I listed them out here, but we're still doing this with a single device. I did not have the means by which to connect, I don't know, 200 devices and really see how it holds up to stress. Uh, we have seen these and we have deployed these in real world environments with many uh, users on them, including some of these HDs. We've installed these in some of the uh, larger venues. They hold up really well, like Unify says, but of course, uh, that's a much harder comparison to do. I just wanted to get kind of a baseline on here. Now, testing methodologies, uh, here is my Unify controller. And besides leaving all the defaults on there, the only things we did change from default, uh, I went over here, I did turn on fast roaming, that was just a convenience to switch things back and forth. And I've done that a few times and people said they've had problems with it. Please note what it says right here. Uh, fast roaming for modern devices with 802.11R compatibility. Older devices may experience connectivity issues. Um, we've definitely run into that. Whether or not you want to turn it on, it's going to depend on if they have older devices. Modern phones and 802R has been around for a while, but uh, fast roaming is a thing that does work well, but you do have to have devices that support it. Combine name and SSID. This was a default we did change as well. This allows me to jump between the different networks. And I can jump between the network that we have here that we call testify, and it adds the suffix underscore 2.4, so I can easily tell my system here to switch between them. Now, testing tools. This is Wavemon, and I'm currently connected to a 2.4 gigahertz uh, network. And when we go here, select network, there's the Testify network, there's the Testify 2.4. This is how I would switch each one. Now, the other uh, testing methodologies that I did for each device, I unplugged it and set one right here. The only one I said in an upright position was this uh, in-wall HD, then unplugged and plugged them in one by one. This testing took a long time to do to kind of get these numbers, but I made sure they were all in consistently the same spot and I put my laptop consistently in the same spot so I could get a baseline to see if there was any significant difference one room over uh, when I did the initial test. And it really wasn't too big of a deal. When I moved these one room over, the signal strength between them was fairly consistent. So we have right here, roughly minor changes between any one of them on the five channel and very little change between them on the 2.4 channel. And like I said, each one was plugged in individually. The other ones were all turned off. So I was doing this at a one at a time setup. Also, uh, they were in the studio room here. There's one wall between them. So that's why it says next room test averages. There's some computers on the workbenches and things like that, but everything was kept in exactly the most consistent place possible to try to get a really consistent average between them to make sure the testing was as consistent as possible, as I keep saying here, to make sure you understand that because what you're going to see next is the challenge I had with these. And these numbers here for the speed, besides getting a little bit faster speed out of the UAP HD, not much, which is a little bit faster, I had a hard time doing the testing. And let me explain. So right now we see we have an excellent signal, excellent signal strength. And we're connected to this in-wall HD and we're going to go around speed test here. And we are seeing an even slower speed than when it was in the next room. That's the first anomaly I ran into was some of the really slow speeds. And the in-wall HD is 
one that this may come up with if you install these in a hotel and we have hotels and venues they're kind of cool except if you were to install them not lower but higher and someone had their laptop set like on a table or a desk that was close to it you actually get slower speeds if they're adjacent to it and the speed goes up as it's a little bit away completely a non-issue for ones mounted to the ceiling but line of sight is the best way to do it that's why these are popular for places like hotels where you have a lot of density in the room and you know running them down a hallway means you have to pass through a wall putting them in the same room well now you don't have to pass through but if they get too close you get a little bit slower now looking at the numbers here this is where those challenges come in because let's uh, move my arms around a little bit actually let's set this on the floor set it over there and so now with that on the floor we're seeing 73 83 so we got it consistent 73 let me put my arms out here now we're at 52 and this is the same challenge i ran into with every one of them so these averages i put together are very much well averages and that speed comparison was the challenging to do. I let it run for about 10 minutes on each, the 2.4 and the 5, to try to come up with those average numbers at the end. And it averages it out with iPerf when I was doing this. But that really was a challenge. So despite having a really consistent signal over here in WaveMon between all the devices, that moving my arms around anything i would have to sit perfectly still to wait for the numbers to stabilize to really come up with the average and you can even see me moving around still causes slight variations in here so that was where one of the big challenges was what was interesting though is as we went outside these started dropping and i found a spot and i have it mapped out here in google maps now i had them same spot in the studio and put them on the table and i roughly dropped this little pin uh, where the studio table exists inside the building then we have a lobby so we've got two walls including a brick outside wall with both of these walls having a double drywall on them and a parking brick that i set my laptop on to do the test so i was doing the 2.4 test out there the UAP ACLR lived up to its name of being long range. I was able to get, and it wasn't very good signal. I didn't note the signal strength when I was out there. It was kind of low, but I was able to get a consistent transfer out of it. The interesting thing about these ones, including the HD, is the only other one that was kind of able to get working out there. It would have a signal, but once you started doing the transfer, it would just start dropping down to zero. So I was going to put one on here, but it would... The more you test it, the more it kept dropping, so it really didn't stay connected. The in-wall HD dropped, the Nano dropped, but the AC Pro, surprisingly, was able to get it pretty consistent without dropping at all. Uh, it would bounce between like six and four, it kind of varied. The UAP ACLR was really like a rock solid eight doing the transfer. So I thought that was interesting that they were, you know, the ACLR does work, even though it doesn't show a substantially different amount of signal strength when it's only one room over. When it was all the way out in the parking lot, it was the most consistent uh, rock steady transfer. And it's also interesting because there was very little variation when you, you get to the 2.4. Now, when I stopped partway through the parking lot as well, when I got to like the edge of connectivity before I got all the way to that brick, uh, the numbers do become a little bit more consistent. It's kind of interesting that you seem to have more variations when you're close than you do as you're further away. Um, but I imagine it's just the way some of the uh, works and the beam forming and the way the uh, Wi-Fi interferes with and bounces off of different things uh, when it's closer here. So that was a comparison test I did. Um, there is a, like I said, more exhaustive list that Unify has as far as all the use cases. But this is also one of the things I really want to highlight. And uh, we're going to feel free to carry on and discuss this in our forums. And if you have better insight, uh, I'm more than welcome to do some more reading if you want to share some links to it. But this is what we consistently run into when we test Wi-Fi. No two scenarios are the same. Wi-Fi is very hard to test. Wi-Fi, even moving my arms around, even though that's over there and I'm over here, even if I put it on the other side, we will see constant variations in the numbers. This is the big challenge with Wi-Fi. We'll put this all the way on the table over there. And I'm on this side of it. And let's see if those numbers vary still. But this is just why Wi-Fi is not an easy, there's no slam dunk answer of which one's the best or why my Wi-Fi may be having problems. There's a lot of things going on. So putting on that side, we're somewhat consistent, right? But let me lean back a little bit. And even though I'm on this side, we watched it drop all the way, 62. Let me put my hands on the keyboard. We're at 94. Wow, my hands on the keyboard seem to make it better. So cool, hands on keyboard versus hands off keyboard. We go down in speed. 
<laughs> so this is one of the big challenges in Wi-Fi and why it's um, when people ask us for help that we're more than willing to help and with projects and planning on Wi-Fi, line of sight's the best, but you can see the amount of interference and how tricky it is once you leave a Faraday cage to get the Wi-Fi testing done. So hopefully you found this insightful. Um, I'll leave links where you can you know pick and choose because there's plenty of other considerations, including density uh, for when you're doing these deployments and things like that. But there is no magic secret sauce for uh, deploying Wi-Fi and just figuring out what's in walls or what's going to interfere more or less. Um, but I will admit, the one thing I can tell you out of this is that the uh, long range model is exactly what they say it is. So outside of that, everything else was pretty consistent with all these and everything else just comes down to density and um, the other factors in, in them of which one you need, whether or not you need 4x4 MIMO, 3x3 MIMO, how many devices you're going to connect to it, do you need those devices fastest? And of course, the ultimate answer is, because this comes up, should I connect my gaming system? This is a thing I've had people message us about more than once. No, don't connect your gaming system over Wi-Fi. Always hardline it, and this is the reason why. These latency problems and these moving around problems, you can get an inconsistent connection and potentially have problems. All right, and thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general. Even suggestions for new videos, they're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.